Goalie equipment. The goalie in boys lacrosse requires equipment that fits and is worn properly. Shoes, approved helmet, throat guard, mouth guard, chest protector, arm pads, cup with supporter, gloves, and a goalie stick are all required equipment for youth goalies. Chest protection needs to fit properly so there is no space between the throat guard and chest area. The entire chest region must be covered, and the chest protector must be long enough to protect the lower abdomen as well. Arm pads should be fitted to the body to allow mobility and worn over the elbow to ensure protection. A properly molded mouth guard is required. It must be of a color, not clear or white. A helmet should not be loose and should not fall into your vision. Be sure it fits snug to the head and stays still with the chin strap secure. All helmets must meet the Noxie test standard. The throat guard must be attached to the helmet and cover the throat area. There should be little to no space between the helmet and the throat protector. Gloves complete the protective equipment and should fit snug to the fingertips. The palms of the gloves should be intact and should never be altered. Lastly, the stick. A goalie stick is his tool of the trade. Each player's stick is unique to the player's style and skill level. Be sure your stick length and pocket meet the U.S. Lacrosse youth guidelines and rules of the game. In addition to the requirements stated in the NFHS rules for required equipment for goalies, the 2014 boys youth rules require that all goalkeepers are required to wear arm pads. Goalkeepers also may wear, but are not required to wear, shin, knee, and thigh pads if they choose. Player equipment. Boys lacrosse requires equipment that fits and is worn properly. Shoes, rib guard, shoulder pads, arm pads, gloves, mouth guard, approved helmet, cup with supporter, and a stick complete the list of equipment utilized by field players. Rib guard, shoulder pads, arm pads should be all fitted to the body to allow comfort and mobility and give the needed protection as safety is the number one priority. A properly molded mouth guard is required. It must be of a color, not clear or white. A helmet should not be loose and should not fall into your vision. Be sure it fits snug to the head and stay still with the chin strap secure. All helmets must meet the Noxie test standard. Gloves complete the protective equipment and should fit snug to the fingertips. The palms of the gloves should be intact and should never be altered. Lastly, the stick. A player's stick is his tool of to the trade. Each player's stick is unique to the player's style and skill level. Be sure your stick length and pocket meet the U.S. Lacrosse youth guidelines and rules of the game. In addition to the requirements stated in the NFHS rules for player equipment, the boys' youth rules require that all players wear a protective cup. U.S. Lacrosse also highly recommends that rib pads be worn by all players. Cross Dimensions U.S. Lacrosse recommends that coaches assess players' size, strength, and skill in determining the proper long cross length for defensive players with the NFHS rules. U.S. Lacrosse further recommends that a long cross should not be taller than the player at any youth level. Cross dimensions at the U15 and U13 level must conform to NFHS or NCAA requirements. At the U11 level, the length of the cross for field players may be 37 to 42 inches or 47 to 54 inches for the long crosses. At the U9 level, all crosses for field players shall be 37 to 42 inches. 3-yard rule. In boys' youth play, all legal stick checks, body checks, holds, or pushes must be on a player in possession of the ball or within 3 yards of a loose ball or ball in flight. This rule is a change from the 5 yards at the NFHS level and minimizes risk for the players. This rule does not apply to a restart where all players must still be no less than 5 yards away from the player that will be restarting with the ball. Take out and excessive body checks. Take out checks or excessive body checks are prohibited at the U15 level and below. These types of checks are defined as any body check in which a player lowers his head or shoulder with the force and intent to put the other player on the ground. In addition, a body check considered more aggressive or more physical than necessary to stop the advancement of the player carrying the ball or to keep or move a player away from a loose ball shall be considered unnecessary roughness. The penalty for a takeout or excessive body check is a two to three minute non-releasable foul or an ejection at the official's discretion. Slashing. In addition to the rules on slashing covered in the NFHS rules of play, 
Any one-handed check shall be considered a slash, whether or not it makes contact with the opposing player. This restriction applies to all youth age levels. Please watch the following clips for examples of one-handed checks at the youth level. In this first clip in a U15 contest, watch as the offensive player has a fast break towards the goal. The trailing defender delivers an uncontrolled one-handed check that is illegal at the youth level and should be penalized. In the second clip during a U11 contest, the clearing player has a break towards his offensive half when the trailing defender delivers a one-handed check that should be penalized as slashing at the youth level. Unnecessary Roughness U.S. Lacrosse Youth Rules called attention to unnecessary roughness by making it a non-releasable foul. This includes, but is not limited to, deliberate or excessive violent contact, excessively violent infraction of the rules by pushing and holding, any avoidable act on the part of a player that is deliberate or excessive, or a check delivered with a punching blow with the gloved hands of a player. The penalty for this foul may be a one to three minute penalty. However, officials are encouraged to utilize the more severe penalties if a penalty occurs. This concludes the U.S. Lacrosse Youth Rules portion of this video. For more information on the U.S. Lacrosse Youth Rules of Play, please go to www.uslacrosse.org rules. You may also refer to the U.S. Lacrosse Youth Rules and Best Practices Guidebook, published annually by U.S. Lacrosse and distributed to youth parents, coaches, and officials regarding these rules of play.